Hi, this is Keith Lazuka. I'm one of the developers of the Elm plugin for IntelliJ. And we recently released a bunch of cool new features, so I wanted to demo some of those as well as some features that have existed for a while. So the Elm plugin for IntelliJ is a free plugin that works with JetBrains family of IDEs. Um, you can download the IntelliJ Community Edition for free on Windows, Mac, Linux, um, and it works there. It also works with Ultimate, and it works for JetBrains uh, JavaScript ID called WebStorm, although this is a uh, paid product. But we'll be using IntelliJ, um, the regular ID. And for this demo, I'm going to be looking at the uh, Richard Feldman's Elm Spa example, just to be some code that some people are familiar with to play around with. So you can rename pretty much everything. Like I could rename this this view function to be view form helper whatever, and you see the results immediately. You can rename types. So maybe this form here, I want to rename this type to be input form and you see it updates everywhere. You can rename record fields. Um, maybe I want to rename this to be email address. You can rename a module. So down here we call api.register. Um, maybe we want to, this is the spa example, they call it the conduit service. So maybe we, we want to rename that to be conduit API. And it not only renames the qualified name, it renames the module declaration, and it also renames the file on disk. And it does this rename for all the files in the project. So if we were to look at the, um, so the diff shows that it's modified all the calls to api.get, api.post, whatever, and renamed it with the actual module the new module name, and it also renamed the imports. So I reverted all those changes, and now I want to show you some of the new features related to record fields. Um, being smart about what a record field refers to is kind of difficult in Elm because of the way that record extensions work and type aliases and unannotated functions. Um, but we have a really good um, system that will be reliable and um, do exactly what you want. So here we are accessing the problems field on this uh, model record. And one thing we, we might want to do is click it and see where it's defined. And we navigate to here. And another thing we might want to do is find all the usages of this, places where this field is accessed. So I can jump around and I can see here, you know, here's where it's initialized, here's where we map over it, here's where we re clear it out. Of course, go to declaration works also for functions. Um, it works for types. And find usages also works. We can do the same thing. Find all the places where form is referenced. Another thing we do is we analyze your code for unused imports and unused functions. So here we see that there's some imports that are grayed out. It's because these imports are no longer necessary. The code doesn't use them. So you can press Option Enter, press Optimize Imports, and it uh, deletes them for you. We can actually look for unused imports across the entire project. So I'm going to do Run Inspection, and I'm going to do Unused Import. It's going to search all the Elm code in your project. Find all the places where you have unused imports. Um, in this case, we have an exposing that's exposing a function called string, but it's not actually used. So let's navigate there. We also have, we're importing JSON decode pipeline as pipeline, but we're not using that. Um, so we can just press optimize imports and it just deletes the parts that it needs to. We can also search for unused functions and parameters. So we search for the, look for all unused symbols across the entire project. Here we have a case branch where we're giving it a name, but we're not actually using it. 
Uh, that may be a problem or maybe it's not. Let's suppose that that's intentional and we do want to ignore it. So we can press option enter, rename it to underscore, and that's that. Here we have two functions which are not being called, so we can safely delete them. We also have support for automatically adding imports. Um, in this case, we're using decode.map, so this is probably an alias. Um, let's suppose that we forgot to import json.decode. Okay, so IntelliJ checks and sees if your imports are valid and if the, you know if it can resolve what this name refers to. Um, so in this case, there's an error here. We can press Option Enter. It's offering to import it for us, and you see that the error went away. So it generated this import statement and exposed the decoder type. Well, now we also have these kind of qualified um, names, which were originally using an alias. Um, so I can press Option Enter on that, import. We can import the json.decode module under the alias decode, and that will fix um, almost all of the remaining errors. This one just needs to be exposed. Another cool thing you can do with the Elm plugin is infer the type of any expression. So here we have kind of this sort of complex expression. We can press Control Shift P. It'll give us all the nested expressions. Let's suppose we want to know what is the type of this thing that's feeding into the pipeline. Um, it's a task. What if we wanted to know what that entire expression is after the pipeline? It's a command of messages. What if we wanted to know the type of this entire thing, etc. Having the type inference built into the plugin allows us to do a lot of cool things. Um, like for instance, we can generate a type annotation. In this case, the view tags function has a type annotation, but let's pretend that it didn't. Uh, so we wrote our code, we press option enter, we choose add type annotation, and it generates it. Another cool thing we can do is we can generate functions from a type annotation. Here, we just have a type annotation. I press Option Enter, I choose Create, and it knows that there's one parameter, and I'm gonna call it Tags, and then we can do our thing. And Type Checker runs and makes sure that it's correct. In this case, we're returning a list of HTML, but actually it needs to be an HTML, so like, you know, we just need to do something like wrap that thing up, and now there's no more errors. One of the newest features is the ability to generate JSON decoders and encoders based on your types. So here we have this profile record with a bio and a avatar, and we can generate a decoder for it by writing an annotation. So like maybe it's like profile decoder and it's going to be a decoder of profile and press option enter, choose generate decoder. And you see it uses JSON decode pipeline to build this thing. It correctly handles the maybe on the string and a really cool feature here is that it knows how to handle this like non-standard library type called avatar. And the way that it knows how to handle it is that it searches your entire Elm project for a function that returns a decoder of that type, in this case, an avatar decoder. Um, and then it uses it. We also support in generating encoders. So we can write encode, encode profile. So it's gonna take a profile as input and it's gonna return encode.value. In this case, we need to import it. Um, we're going to import json.encode as encode. And now we're going to do generate encoder. And you'll notice that it, again, it, it finds the custom encoder for this avatar type. Um, we can go and look at it. Looks like, you know, this is just something that's part of the Elm Spa example. There's a lot more that I'd like to show you, but this is already getting long enough. I'll show you one last thing, which is a new feature, the introduced variable refactoring. This allows you to take a complex expression and um, declare it like locally inside a let in expression. So here there's kind of this big mess of things um, and maybe I want to extract this out. Um, so I select the part that I want to extract. Let's get the bio in there also. Press command option V. 
and it creates the let in and it's gonna you know let's call it uh, encode bio um, and likewise I mean here it doesn't really make sense but just to show how it works we can also pull this thing out uh, encode avatar and it reuses the same uh, let declaration well that's it for this brief tour of the Elm plugin for IntelliJ there is more information available on the website, and you can also contact me on Slack or create GitHub issues if you have any kind of problems. And I appreciate any feedback or feature requests. I hope that this makes writing Elm code easier for you, and thank you for watching.